there any discussion? Just a question. Did you consider calling this a sanctuary hospital or shouldn't we go there? We talked about that. Cassie and I talked about that and the recommendation that might not be a good idea. No. Seems, seems reasonable. Makes you ready? Well, do we want to uh, read it out loud so it's yeah. on the record? Uh, there are copies on the... Well, for our vast audio audience, and can kind of listen to this later. They don't. Okay. Would you like to read it, Mr. Joyner? Jefferson County Public Hospital District Number Two, Resolution 2017-15, a resolution declaring the district's position regarding the impact of immigration status on access to district services. Whereas the Board of Jefferson County Public Hospital District Number Two is committed to providing services to regain and maintain the optimal health of all who seek needed medical care through through any and all of the services the district provides and whereas those services must be provided in a safe and nurturing environment and whereas the healing and conforming services, comforting services provided by our staff must be made available to all without consideration of immigration status and Whereas the Washington State Hospital Association's philosophy on immigration status with regard to access to health services as delineated in the quote, WUSHA Statement on Immigration Executive Order, end quote, dated February 2nd, 2017, aligns well with the spirit of the district's mission, vision, and values. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Jefferson County Public Hospital District Number Two hereby adopts the Washington State Hospital Association's position paper titled "Wishes Statement on Immigration Executive Order," dated February 2nd, 2017, hereby referred to as Resolution 2017-15, Attachment A, as the official position position of the board and the district on this issue. And the letter referenced Attachment A. Wish a statement on immigration executive order, February 2nd, 2017. While our country seeks to find a path forward on immigration, Washington State's hospitals and health systems are focused on the people who are right in front of us needing our care. We stand united to serve patients and communities. We ask patients about the most intimate details about their bodies and their health but we do not ask patients about their immigration status. All patients are welcome in our hospitals and clinics. When you are in a hospital, caregivers provide care without judgment. Doctors and nurses should be focused on caring for patients, not examining patients' documents. Caring for everyone is part of the heartfelt mission of healthcare, but it also has a very practical side. Viruses and bacteria don't check visas. A healthy community depends on everyone's ability to get healthy and stay healthy. Hospitals and health systems rely on employees from, broad, from a broad variety of backgrounds. The hospital workforce is large and diverse. That cultural richness benefits us all. The care we provide is improved by learning from each other. Washington State Hospital employees are valued for the care they provide no matter their national origin. Washington State Hospitals and Health Systems are grateful and honored to serve our communities in all their richness and diversity. Sincerely, Cassie Sauer, WISHA President and CEO. Are there any further questions, any further discussion? All in favor of okay. adopting resolution 2017-15? I'd like to propose an amendment to correct that one typo in the first whereas. <coughs> The uh, amendment to uh, correct go was through in the first paragraph, third line. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Back to the main motion. All those in favor of adopting resolution 2017-15 say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Say no. Opposed? Everyone needs to be 
Tony for bringing that to the board. Consideration of cover letter for resolution 2017-09. Um, Commissioner Call, would you, uh, you do have a motion that you care to make? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, thank you for placing this on the agenda. Um, and uh, this weekend I sent to uh, the other commissioners uh, my proposed motion so that you would all have a chance to uh, consider it um, adequately today. Um, the, um, well, what I'll do is just uh, make the motion and then we can have the discussion. So um, I move that we send uh, the four, excuse me, five letters that are indicated in the email um, and of which you have a copy uh, to the respective uh, people to whom they are addressed. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Discussion. Could you uh, explain item number six on that, please? Um, item number six, um, I realize that um, if we are sending a letter to uh, President Trump, as well as to uh, our elected officials in the state of Washington, uh, our two representatives and our state senator, that um, we might remind them to consider what I believe is a shared long-term vision of a single-payer um, health care plan. And so to those elected officials, uh, I thought it might be good to send a copy of the resolution which this board passed in the year 2014 that basically said that we encouraged um, our elected officials to continue to study, design, and implement um, a single-payer health care system at both state and federal levels. Is there a discussion on this motion? Commissioner DeLeo? I guess from a logistics standpoint, does anybody give a count of how many letters we're talking about? Uh, who's going to be putting this together and what the cost is going to be? This is the first up question. Secondly, I think in looking at this, I don't think there's a single person this is going out to that isn't thinking about doing everything they possibly can to assure access for health care for everybody in their community in the most cost-effective manner in a way that they can access it without being financially, de financially devastated, which is always represented. This board and the administration of this district has worked hard over the years to develop the respect of the legislators of the Bell Hospital Districts when Mike writes a letter like he did in March 15th to Senator Cantwell, they listen because they know when we come forward, we're working on something important for the people in our community, something that's attainable. And particularly with adding the single payer on the back end of this again, I don't think this is going to accomplish anything. I think if anything, it may just As I said, people listen. The Washington Hospital Association sent their entire lobbying team to fight to get the funding for our dental clinic that we want to put up. They fought. They just the state just passed not re reducing the payments, Medicaid payments, and hospital-based clinics. A lot of things that are happening just because of some of the things that this hospital has been doing. And for us, for our board to put our credibility and the respect that these people have for us into this, into basically what I would feel if I received this letter saying, hey, you guys need to pay attention to this when they already are. I, I don't see it's going to accomplish anything. It's going to be a, a lot of staff work for people who already have way too much on their plate. I don't think there's anything in there that we haven't gone to Olympia, that we haven't gone to Washington, D.C. and fought for. So I don't know why there's all of a sudden a need to start doing something we've already been doing. Any other discussion? Um, I'm in favor of this. Um, I think it's uh, where everyone up here is in favor of fighting the good fight to improve health care, improve access. And I see, um, as a board, uh, 
this is a good action. This is part of the good fight for healthcare for me. So I don't see it. Um, and I think anyone at these in these positions, uh, if they receive a letter like this, I don't see it in the least bit threatening or condescending. It's it's really a very polite um, call to uh, uh, to enhance your efforts um, as and work with us and um, to improve healthcare. And um, so I think the language is actually really safe. Um, so yeah, I'm in favor of it. Any other? I'd like to allow others to speak first, and my uh, announcement. Well, uh, yeah. uh, I feel, in, in my opinion, um, I hear both my, my two colleagues who've spoken. Our focus, in my opinion, should be on the hospital district here. Uh, our advocacy should be towards the 96 hour rule, for instance. I've been talking about the 96 hour rule for I don't know how many years trying to get that changed so that we. We don't suffer having to send patients away because they might be here longer than four days. That's the sort of legislation I want to get changed. Um, so we're not financially viable um, because things will may well change uh, as healthcare is changing and we're in such turmoil right now. And what we need to focus on is both here and now. Um, if we're not focused on on on, on just on healthcare on the hospital district. And uh, we get taken over. Um, we, we're no longer independent because of how things change. And I can see that in the sort of system. Um, we're a rural hospital, and before the legislators have said, well, you just need a MD up there with a helicopter service. And that's not what I want for my, my constituents. It's not what I want for our population. So I think we need to stay financially viable, focus at home. Um, change sequestration, have that repealed so that we actually get paid a better amount of money for uh, what they took away and Medicare doesn't even pay uh, what the cost is now. So those are things that I want to focus on and uh, whereas I do hear what Commissioner Redding has just said, having worked in a single payer system, um, a lot of our services I'm sure will be taken away if we, if this sort of thing comes to pass. We'll be doing oncology and somewhere else we'll be doing birth somewhere else and will take away from our population. And many of us don't want to travel anymore. Uh, we want to be taken care of here at home, where we live and thrive here at home. So I think our focus needs to be on our hospital district and not uh, changing the federal, uh, federal health care policy through the state health care policy. Thank you. Mr. Call? Um, well, I, I certainly hear what Commissioner Dressler is saying, and uh, wouldn't for a moment suggest that our focus be elsewhere than our own survival and the needs of our constituents. At the same time, um, I know that politicians need to know what their constituents want and need, and that there's tremendous advantage for a politician like our state representatives and senators and our uh, federal um, our national uh, elected officials, it's very important for them to have the cover, the political cover that they need if they're going to work on something. And at the same time that we are working on preserving what we have from the Affordable Care Act and the benefits we reap from that, I know that there are politicians like Bernie Sanders and others who continue to work for putting in place the possible single-payer health care system, whether it's Medicare for all or whatever it's called, whatever form it takes. And those people need the kind of political backing, the kind of backing from their constituents, not just people going and talking to them, but also written confirmation that we have considered the issues and that we're behind them to work on the long-term fix to our broken health care system. And so um, I think that there's tremendous advantage in uh, declaring what I believe our constituents in this county want, which is protection of Medicaid and Medicare services, expansion of Medicare services and Medicaid services, increased age eligibility for people who need Medicare, 
and eventually a single payer system. I do believe that eventually the Affordable Care Act, in whatever form it continues to exist, is eventually going to fail to solve the problem of access for all. And so we need to give all of our elected officials the kind of support that they need to continue to explore and look for opportunities to introduce some kind of single payer plan. And that's why I would strongly urge us to, to do this. Besides, both of the resolutions that were passed, the one in 2014 on single payer and the one that we passed earlier um, last month, um, both of them have an action portion. They say, therefore, we will do something. This is the something that we said we would do in both of those resolutions. We said that we would urge other elected officials to do the same. We haven't done that yet. This is the action step that this body made the decision to carry out. So I'm basically giving us the method for carrying out that action step. So I would, I would encourage passage of this, uh, of this motion. Is there any other discussion? First of all, one of the things that was in the resolution talked about extending uh, dental care. Clearly, in this, in this community, getting dental care under the Washington Apple program is nearly impossible for adults. We as a district are developing a dental health uh, component within our clinic to deal with this. These are the things that we as a district need to work with. On Monday, there was a meeting here of a support group for veterans and how they, could, through, the, through the Choice Program, can get their health care here. It is a nightmare. If you want to work on something, contact your legislators and make it so that these honored veterans, the people who have given us so much, can get their health care here. They don't have to travel to Seattle. It's a nightmare. It's a bureau. It, for, there are providers. There are people from the VA and there are people from the volunteer group that covers this area. Trying to help everybody understand how to work through this and how to get our people taken care of. If there's a group that needs the voice, this is the group, our veterans is the one that deserves it, and that's not included in this that I can see. Is there any other discussion? All right, I'll call for the question then. All those in favor of passing resolution? Okay. It's not resolution. It's not a resolution. 
the motion, approving your motion to send these letters for resolution 2017-09. Say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. 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 Chair votes no. Thank you. We have had, uh, we could not, because our attorney was not available and uh, RCW 5.60.060.2.A um, <laughs> stipulates that in order to uh, have uh, discussed potential litigation, we must have an attorney uh, present at least by phone. We could not make those, that arrangement, so we will not be having. Will we be taking up that issue at a later meeting? Um, yes. 